are going to study acute abdomen. So when do you say that the person has acute abdomen? The first thing is pain in abdomen. Second is swelling. Third is indication of vomiting. or absolute constipation and the fourth is when there is injury in the region of abdomen either blunt or sharp now whenever this patient is brought to you how do you approach so you carefully note the identification and demographic data you chronologically note, note the chronological order in chronological order the complaints about each complaint you ask the question onset course duration treatment taken response aggravating factor relieving factor associated factor and then you go to the past personal drug history and you ask question to rule in or rule out diagnosis correct then you can do investigations assess the assess the general condition then you can image the abdomen by ultrasound x ray etc in x ray the most important thing thing that you see are fluid levels which indicates intestinal obstruction and air under diaphragm which indicates perf perforation and of course before you investigate you do a thorough general examination systemic examination and then you come to local exam possible causes of an abdominal acute abdomen so the possible causes are dependent on the site if this is the abdomen one thing can be the git here you have the spleen here you have the liver so you have something which is called as git then you have something which is spleen then you have something as a liver and gallbladder 
ਸੈਂਟਰ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਕੋਲ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਪਾਉਂਦਾ ਹੈ then you have something which is called as kidney here and you have the urinary bladder the uterus and it it makes up and sometimes even structures which are outside the abdomen can cause a problem that means you have to look for hernia sites so now what can happen in the liver and the gall bladder gall stone there is one thing else which is the pancreas you can have pancreatitis and what is called as pseudo pancreatic cyst okay so let us see in usually to get to the lump but what if there is injury it can present as rupture rupture is identified by tenderness by hemoperitoneum by pain in the left shoulder which is called as tear sign and by confusion around the umbilicus which is called as greater nerve and the treatment of hemoglobinic <coughs> rupture is clinically then we look at the liver and the gall bladder so you have pain in the gall bladder region is the right to continue it can be a colic it refers to the right shoulder when the pain in the right hypochondrium refers to the right shoulder it is called as ausleo sign you have to look for jaundice liver itself can be ruptured and if there is a laceration in the liver you take the rectus abdominis muscle mass brush it heat it here and apply deep tension sutures to create pressure and hemostasis so a ruptured liver is treated like this. then the pancreatitis and pseudo pancreatic cyst the pancreatitis usually occurs because the bile duct and this is the pancreatic duct and this is opening in the duodenum this is called as ampulla of batter so if there is a stone in the ampulla of batter the bile duct the bile will go into the pancreas the enzyme of the pancreas the toxin amylase all these will become active and they will start digesting the pancreas so the treatment is that they move the stone and do a sphincterotomy of the ampulla of it so you go and endoscopically you can remove the stone you can irrigate the pancreas and you remove this way and you can give drugs which will prevent further formation of stones 
after you have dealt with the jaundice, obstructive jaundice part, you can do a cholecystectomy. And you can do a cholecystectomy by laparoscopy. Then you have renal stone or kidney rupture. So if the kidney is ruptured, you have pain in the renal angle and you may have hematuria. The treatment is to diagnose kidney rupture by good imaging and you go in and treat it exactly like liver rupture. Go in, establish hemostasis by pressure and putting in muscle, crushed muscle which will promote hemostasis. If you can't control the kidney bleeding, you rely on the other kidney and you can do a nephrectomy. All right, then we come finally to the rupture of the intestine. All right, and the rupture of the intestine is this is what happens in intestine. First and the important thing is that you find out what is the site of obstruction. The site of obstruction, let us begin from above. The first is, this is the esophagus. and there is a diverticulum which is called as Killian's diverticulum. So when you eat some food goes into this, this gives you a tea kettle appearance. So food is coming in from here and then trying to get out from here into the esophagus. It gives you a tea kettle appearance. Barium swallow. What you have to do, you have to simply excise the diverticulum. Because it is between the inferior constrictor and the esophagus. And the esophagus that is diverticulum arises. So this is the inferior constrictor, this is the esophagus. It is between this that this diverticulum has arisen. So the first thing is, highest is Killian diverticulum. Then you come to again what is called as Achalasia cardia. Here is a neonate and if you do a barium follow, he is vomiting out whatever he takes. He can vomit it out because there is a tracheoesophageal fistula. Because a TO fistula will, he will also aspirate. But in the Calasia cardia, he will simply vomit. He will not aspirate. So, if there is a fistula between the trachea and the esophagus, this TO fistula, he will vomit also and he will aspirate. With the Calasia cardia, he will simply vomit. <coughs> this Calasia cardia gives you a parrot deep appearance. You 
you can feel a, a hard mass in the hypochondrium of the child and he is vomiting. Major problem is vomiting, not retaining anything. You can go in and if this is the obstruction and these are the muscles around it, you divide the muscles so that the obstruction is relieved. So you can relieve the obstruction, diagnose it early and relieve the obstruction. And what you will have will also be a, a dilated stomach which may be a lump in the left hypochondrium and which is a resonant lump. <clears throat> then you go ahead and there can be an obstruction of the third part of the duodenum by the mesenteric artery. The superior mesenteric artery crosses the duodenum here and if you have given a tight plaster on the abdomen then you can have an obstruction of the third part of the duodenum. This is called as mesenteric, superior mesenteric obstruction of third part of duodenum. Then you have the ileum. The commonest reason of obstruction of ileum is tuberculosis. I have to rub it so much. Tuberculosis can present as three things. It can present as mesentery. So you have a doughy feeling in the abdomen because of thickening of mesentery. It can present as lymph nodes and it can present as intestinal obstruction. In the presentry it can also present as ascites. Now what happens in intestinal obstruction? Supposing this is the intestine. Its wall has become very thickened here because of the tuberculosis and there is an obstruction at this place. So what will happen? First of all there will be a colic. The peristalsis will try to push for food through this obstruction. So there can be an intestinal colic. You may be able to see visible the second thing will be that this thing will become distended or dilated. So you will see distended bowel movements. And these bowel loops will lead to distension of abdominal. So if you want to see the progression of intestinal obstruction, you have to do by abdominal gut charging. So what, can, what is the third thing? The third thing is that the pressure here is very very high and it is higher than the pressure of Veins. So this is the vein and this pressure is more than the pressure in this vein. So there is stasis in the vein and this can thrombose. So there is mesenteric vascular thrombose. The artery keeps on pumping blood and therefore blood starts into the human of the intestine. So you may have melina or you may even have a blood vomit. Imagine this. Now the pressure becomes so much that it also obstructs the artery. 
Supposing the bowel has perforated, so if it is ischemic, there is rebound tenderness. So what will happen? Abdom, there will be peritonitis, and there will be bone-like rigidity. There will be absent bowel sounds. There will be air under the diaphragm, which can be seen by masking of liver dullness. Or it can be seen by X-ray, abdomen, AP view in sitting position. So this indicates a perforation. So you have understood. All right. What do you do? Yes. What do you do to manage this? So you have done an ultrasound. You have done an imaging. You don't do a barium meal or a barium solo, otherwise the obstruction will increase. Okay, and now you are there to manage. We are giving orders. So the first order is this. You don't want to accumulate. So first order is nil orally. The second is rise tube suction. The third is IV sedimentation. Fourth is abdominal gut charting. The fifth is latter stage. Yes, the blue enema. But you be you don't give an enema if you suspect perforation. So it is no no if you if you suspect perforation. Okay. And then you can give something which will stimulate bowel movements, and that is calcium pentothenate IV. And then you do what is called as monitoring. Monitoring EC, monitoring pulse, respiration, blood pressure, temperature, abdominal gut, intake out. Then you can take an X-ray of the chest. 
you can do antibodies for tuberculosis you can do a sputum for afb and you can do a rt pcr in peritoneal fluid all this is to diagnose whether this is because of tb after this you also start anti tubercular treatment now in the monitoring in the monitoring if in you you don't think that there is progress then you explore that there. there is no progress take the worst thing then you don't do it open and see rather than wait and see open using a right paramedian patient under general anesthesia you open using a right paramedian approach you, and the incision depends on where do you think is obstruction if there is more dis more distension than vomiting then there is a distal obstruction and you open Basically, if this is the abdominal wall, and you have taken out this bowel loop, how do you know? And this bowel loop is distended. You take out a distended bowel loop, and you go from from the distended distally till you get the obstruction. Okay. So this is a distended bowel loop. How would you know from this which is distal, which is proximal? Tell me. you are seeing these arterial arcades in the mesentery okay so as you move distal the arterial arcades will become smaller if it was this size it will become this size then it will become this size okay arterial arcades become smaller as you move distal So this is the not distended loop and this is the distended loop and here was the obstruction. So you do a end to end anastomosis and you have bypassed the distended loop. So this distended loop is now connected to the non distended loop and the obstruction has been bypassed. So this is called as ileo ileostomy correct now we move more distant tell me what is the reason of obstruction at the ileo cecal junction tell me bolo bhai ileo cecal junction pe obstruction kyon hota hai If this is the cecum, this is the appendix. Here is the ileum that is gone here, and this is the ascending colon. What happens that this this ileum starts 
going into the polar. This is called as intersection. Then there is another reason in the left hypo left uh, colon. What is that? Batao, yar, tum log. Hamay nahi bata. Left hypochondrium mein lump hai. Colic ho raha hai. Absolute constipation hai. Tire like swelling hai. Tire like lump hai bowel. like this and it will never become it will never twist so basically you try to increase the distance between the twist between this and this retroperitoneally you increase the distance so this is a sigmoid volvulus then another reason tell me or bata why कलेजिया कार्डिया का दोस्त जो है रेक्टो सिक्वर्ड जंक्शन पे कौन सा होता है तो कलेजिया कार्डिया ईसोफेजिक गैस्ट्रिक में होता है नीचे कौन सा होता है ठीक है सेम सो यू डायग्नोज इट बाई determining the site and seeing a huge mass of sigmoid filler okay. and you deal with it the same way as you deal with Achalasia cardia and the last cause is imperforate so here the upper and the lower 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 इंटरस्टेनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन के यस 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 सर और इसके अलावा क्या हो सकता है ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन के अलावा हो सकता है ब्लीडिंग हो ब्लीडिंग लिवर और स्टीम में होती है वो तुम्हें समझ में आ गया क्या करना है तीसरा क्या हो सकता है परफोरेशन हो परफोरेशन को डायग्नोस करना है भाई ये साइलेंट एब्डोमन पेरिटोनाइटिस बोट लाइक रिजिडिटी Air under the diaphragm and by X-ray and by masking of liver tunnel. This may be thorough explore करना है और treat करना है और supportive treatment क्या है? Upper set to करो, raised tube suction, IV alimentation, abdominal gun charting, latest tube, ठीक है? And monitoring the patient. 
और स्पेसिफिक ट्रीटमेंट क्या हो सकता है अगर टीवर क्लोज है तो ए टी टी कैन बी स्पेसिफिक तो भैया अब अगर इस पर छोटा सा कुछ लिखने को आ गया तो अब आप लोग सब लोग एक जवाब लिखिए क्वेश्चन है वो क्वेश्चन है डिस्कस डिस्कस द प्रेजेंटेशन डायग्नोसिस डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट इन अ केस ऑफ